we are going to be talking about adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. So our learning target for today is I can add and subtract proper fractions with like denominators. Before we get started on actually solving equations, let's remember some important words that might help us decide if we are adding or subtracting. So if we look at our adding column, we'll see that some words to help us are sum, in all, together, and more. On our subtracting side, we will see difference, how many more, fewer, and less. Remember, this does not mean that every single time you see these words that you will add or subtract. You do need to understand exactly what the question is asking. Let's start with this one. This model is shaded to represent one whole. Before I do anything else, I'm actually going to figure out what the unit fraction is. So remember, the unit fraction is one piece of the whole. So I'm going to count how many total pieces there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my unit fraction will equal one-tenth. Let's read the rest of the problem. These models are each shaded to represent a fraction. What is the sum of the shaded fractions shown above? I'm going to make another note here that I see the word sum, and when I see the word sum in my problem, that tells me that I need to add. So let's identify our two fractions. Remember, our denominator is always going to be 10 because we, our unit fraction is 1 tenth, and we know that we are adding. So let's count how many pieces are shaded in the first one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my first fraction has 6 tenths shaded. My second fraction has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tenths shaded. So we know that we can add straight across our numerators to find our total. Our denominator will stay 10. We never add our denominators together. That is because we are not changing the size of our pieces. If we changed our denominator to 20, that would mean that each piece was worth 1 20th. And we know that our unit fraction is 1 tenth, so we can't do that. So we can do 6 pieces plus 8 pieces will give me 14. But I see that that's an improper fraction. Whenever I see an improper fraction, that tells me that I also am going to have a mixed number. So in order to figure out what our mixed number is, why don't we show some work on our diagrams? So I notice that this second one has more shaded in than the first one. So we're going to borrow some pieces from the first one and shade them in on our second piece. So I'm going to take that guy, shade him in over here, and the second guy, shade him in over here. So now I have one hole shaded in and one, two, three, four tenths over here. I know that four tenths plus one will give me my mixed number of 1 and 4 tenths. So the sum of the fractions is 14 tenths or 1 and 4 tenths. Let's try another one. Again, we see that this model is shaded to represent one whole. Let's identify our unit fraction right away. I notice that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces, which tells me my unit fraction is 1 sixth. These models are each shaded to represent a fraction. What is the difference of the shaded fractions shown above? That word difference gives me a clue of whether or not I am adding or subtracting. And if you remember, difference tells me that I am going to subtract. So let's identify both of our fractions. The first fraction has one, two, three, four, five pieces shaded in. So we have five sixths shaded in. Remember, difference means subtract, so we are going to be subtracting. I see one, two, three pieces shaded in here. So we have five sixths minus three sixths. If you remember, we have to keep our denominator of sixths, and I can just subtract my numerator. Five minus three equals two, so our fraction should be two sixths. If we want to show it on our diagram, we can start by looking at our separate pieces, and we are subtracting our first fraction from our second fraction. So we're going to cross out one piece here, cross out one piece on the other one. Same thing. Every time you do it on your second fraction, you do it on your first fraction. 
we have no pieces left on our second fraction. So we see that our first fraction has two sixths left over, and that matches our answer. This time we have a word problem. Let's read it, read it carefully. Lauren, Kim, and Maddie hiked over the weekend. Lauren hiked two-fifths of a mile, Kim hiked four-fifths of a mile, and Maddie hiked two-fifths of a mile. How many miles did the girls walk together? All right, so it's a word problem, so I'm trying to decide if I'm adding or subtracting. I did see a key word here that says together, and I think that when I hear the word together, I'm looking for a total, which tells me I'm going to be adding. So we have Lauren, who had two-fifths of a mile, plus Kim, who had four-fifths of a mile, plus Maddie, who had two-fifths of a mile. The best way to show this is to show it on a lovely number line. So let's start with zero, and we know that we are adding fifths, so let's label all the way until one. Now, I don't want to go all the way to the end of my number line, just in case Lauren, Kim, and Maddie hiked over one mile. So I have zero fifths, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. We know that that's also one. I'm going to come back and I'm going to label each of these. And why don't we continue to two holes, just in case. Six fifths, seven fifths, eight fifths, nine fifths, ten fifths, which would give me two holes. Okay, so we are going to use a different color to represent each girl. So Lauren is going to be two-fifths. So I'm going to hop zero-fifths, one-fifth, two-fifths, and that is Lauren. Next we will do Kim, Kim hiked four-fifths of a mile. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, and that was K for Kim. Next was Maddie, and Maddie hiked two-fifths of a mile. One-fifth, two-fifths. So here we should be able to identify our fraction. I see that we made it all the way until eight-fifths. Now, if we added these pieces together, we would have two plus four, which is six. Six plus two equals eight, and they match each other. But I noticed that this is bigger than one, so it's important for us to find the mixed number. So if you remember, one hole was right here, and two holes was right here. So this would be one hole, one hole and one-fifth, one hole and two-fifths, one hole and three-fifths. So how many miles did the girls hike? They hiked eight-fifths of eight-fifths miles and one and three-fifths miles. Let's try one more question about our friend Dr. Spivey. Dr. Spivey ordered a cake for his birthday. The cake was split into eight equal pieces. He ate two slices by himself. What fraction of the cake remained? Hmm, that word remained. I think a synonym for remained is left over, which tells me that I'm probably going to be subtracting here. I also see that he ate slices. If you're eating, that means you're getting rid of pieces. So let's start by drawing a cake. I don't know about you, but I'm not great at drawing circular cakes. So I'm going to draw a rectangular cake split into eight, excuse me, split into six equal pieces, which means I need seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's turn our cake. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Awesome. So Dr. Spivey ordered this cake, and I see the entire cake. So the entire cake is going to be worth six sixths but he eats two slices. So I'm going to use yellow to show us the slices that he eats. So we are losing two-sixths of the birthday cake. What fraction of the cake remained? I see that there is one, two, three, four pieces left over. But it's not asking how many pieces are left over, it's asking what fraction of the cake remained. So I see one-sixth plus one-sixth plus one-sixth 
plus one sixth for each of our red pieces equals four sixths left over. And if I was to subtract in our equation six sixths minus two sixths, I would know that that also equals four sixths. So what fraction of the cake? Four sixths of the cake remained. Good luck with adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators.